are doodle notes from before. Down at the bottom here, we've got our trapezoid that has exactly one pair of parallel sides, excuse me. And so that's going to be the top and the bottom. Those are called your bases. The line in the center is called the mid segment, which makes sense because it's in the middle. And then these two sides on the edges are called, <coughs> excuse me, legs. Now, the formula we're really going to be focusing on today is this one right here. The mid segment of a trapezoid is equal to base one plus base two divided by two. Now, if you take two numbers and you add them together and you divide them by two, what are you really finding? If I take two numbers, I add them together and I divide by two. What are you finding? Well, let's do an example, ready? Okay, if I have the number two and the number four, right, on a number line. If I pick the number two and the number four, what's two plus four? Six, and what's six divided by two? Three, okay. In location to two and four, where's three? That's right in the middle, yes. So we are just finding the average. That's gonna give me the mid segment. The other thing we're gonna also look at are the angles. What do you notice about these two angles right here? What do you notice? They're what? They are right next to each other, good. That's called consecutive. What else do you notice about those two angles? Are they the same? No. What do they add up to be? 180. What's that called? Search the nest. Supplementary. Very nice. Good. So we've got two angles. When they're on the same leg, they are supplementary. So if they're not on the same parallel line, they're going to add up to 180. So this equation right here is the most important one. And this is the equation we're going to use today. Now, if you take a look at our notes for today, <coughs> right at the very top. We're going to write that equation that we just saw because we're going to use it on essentially all of the problems in this um, on these notes. So here's the formula we're going to use today. The mid segment. So that's the piece in the middle. Is equal to. Base one plus base two divided by two. So we're going to take the two lines or the two numbers on the parallel sides. We're going to add them together and then we're going to divide them by two. So we're just finding the average to get the line in the middle. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. OK, for numbers for actually for numbers one through eight, we're just going to solve for X. Each figure there is a trapezoid. And so we're going to figure out the side lengths for each one. Now, to start, I need to figure out which two pieces are my bases. Your bases are the two lines that are parallel to each other. So in this picture, which two lines are parallel to each other? The one that's the 34 and the one that's the 20. Good. So we're going to mark that using arrows to show that those are parallel. Now, it doesn't matter which one's which. One of those is your base one. One of those is your base two. I'm going to label the top one as my base one, the bottom one as my base two. I could have gone the other way. It doesn't matter. The one and two are just kind of like naming them. They're saying, hey, this is the first one. This is the second one. The piece in the middle is called the mid segment. Again, mid being middle, so your mid segment's always going to be right in the middle of your trapezoid. <clears throat> so my formula is base one plus base two divided by two equals the mid segment. How would I write this as an equation using the numbers that I have here? Who wants to give it a try? 
Trey, go for it. Okay, good. So I've got my top number, 34, plus 20, and then I'm going to divide it by 2. Exactly. So top number, 34, plus bottom number, 20, my base, divided by 2. And now here's the other part, though. I have to set that equal to the mid-segment. Which piece is the mid-segment? X plus 17. So I have to set this equal to X plus 17. Now, don't let this problem scare you. We're going to do what Trey said. We're just going to add these numbers together and divide them by 2. So 34 plus 20 is 54. So I'm going to take 54 and divide it by 2. <coughs> so don't let this fraction freak you out. It just means divide. So what is 54 divided by 2? 20, 27. So this is 27 equals x plus 17. How would I get the x by itself now? Yeah, minus the 17 on both sides. So my final answer is x equals 10. Not hard, right? That's as hard as it gets. So base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2 equals your mid-segment. The important part here is just knowing which one's your basis and which one is your mid-segment. If you know that, you can do all the problems. All right. I will help you set up number two, but then I'm not going to do the algebra. I'm going to do like one of each type with you, and then I'm going to let you finish. So I'll just set up number two with you. Number two, which one are your bases? Which two are your parallel lines? 13 and 33. Good. Nice, Avery. Okay. So again, I want to set up this equation as base one plus base two divided by two equals, I'm just going to put an M there for mid-segment, equals the mid-segment. Someone else who can set up this equation for me. Just set it up. Who wants to try? Avery, go for it. 13 plus 33 divided by 2. 13 plus 33 divided by 2 equals what? What? No, no, don't do the math yet. What should I set this equal to? Oh, um. The mid segment. 7x. Good. Good. There's your setup for the equation. You're going to finish it. Okay? Don't finish it yet. Well, you can if you want. But I'm going to hop on down now to number five. <coughs> so I'm going to do five, seven, and eight with you. All right. Jump on down. Number five. Now, what do you notice is different? I know some of you want to keep working, but jump down to five with me so that you're staying on the same one with me. What do you notice is different about number five? There's a couple of things that are different. What's different? About this problem versus these problems. Okay, this time you got the, the what? The numbers are not on the side this time. Good, what else is different? What markings do you have in this problem you didn't have in the other ones? Yeah, you got these tick marks here. What does that mean? Those two pieces are congruent. They're the same. Yeah. Okay. First thing is I want to mark my parallel lines. Which two are your parallel lines? SR and TQ. Boom. Let's mark them. <clears throat> now. It is already telling you that these two pieces are congruent. That also means that the diagonals are congruent. I tell you that SQ, this piece right here, is 17. I also tell you that TR right here is X plus 13. What should I do? with those two equations if they are congruent. Yeah, 
set them equal to each other. So I'm just going to take X plus 13 and set it equal to 17. Right, because the diagonals are congruent when my two pieces on the side are also congruent. So this is a one step equation. What do I have to do? Yep, minus 13 from both sides and that's it. You get X equals. Four and that's it. That's the whole problem. Not bad. Right. Easy peasy stuff here. Questions on that. All right, seven and eight and then you're going to finish the rest on your own. Now, number seven. What is different about this problem than the last problems we did? So we're jumping around a bit. Number seven. What's different about this problem than the other ones we just did? You got degrees this time. So we're talking about angles. So first thing I want to do is mark my parallel sides. Which ones are parallel? Oh. S, V, and T. Oh, you're okay. So the top and the bottom are parallel. Now, these two angles are on the same base. Does everybody see how they're on the same parallel line right here? Okay, these two angles, if you had to make a guess, what do you notice about these two angles? What do they look like? They look like they're exactly the same because they are. So because I've got these two tick marks here, this shows that these two sides are congruent. This is called an isosceles triangle. You've got two, or sorry, not triangle, isosceles trapezoid. <coughs> You've got two sides that are the same. That means that the two angles that are on the same line are also the same. So these two pieces are congruent. Write that down. If these two pieces are congruent, what should I do with the equations? Set them equal to each other. So it's exactly what we're going to do. 8x minus 14 equals 50. And then it's an algebra problem. What do I do? Add 14. Good. <coughs> Excuse me. 8x equals good 64 and then final step divide by 8. What do you get for your x value? 8 what? Degrees. Why is it degrees this time? Because we're talking about angles so be very careful. Make sure you label your answers correctly. X equals eight degrees. Questions on that one. Okay, one more and you're going to finish the front. Number eight. Now, what do you notice about number eight? What's different about number eight than the one we just did? And seven. What's different? Here's seven. Here's eight. What's different? Okay, good. The angles this time are not next to each other, they are across from each other. First thing I want to do is mark my parallel sides. Which ones are parallel? GF at the top. HE at the bottom. Now, <coughs> excuse me. If they are on the same parallel line, my two angles should be exactly the same. Here's one parallel line right here. You should be able to figure out what angle F is. What should angle F be? 104 degrees. It should be exactly the same as this angle on the same line. This one's 104 degrees. What should angle H be? 
Exactly. 8x minus 4. Good. So this time I've got my angles all matched up. This time my two angles here, right, that are given to me, these ones, are not on the same line. So if I look back at my doodle note, what do you notice about the two angles that are not on the same line? What do you notice about these two angles right here? They're what? They're not the same. And what else? What do they add up to be? 180 degrees. What do we call them when they add up to 180? Starts with an S. Supplementary. Very nice. So these two angles in this problem are supplementary. Write that down. Nice. Supplementary. Okay, so I'm going to take my two angles and add them up to be 180. How would I write that as an equation? Equals? Beautiful. Hey, hey, what's going on? You're okay. You can give me one minute. I'm just going to finish this problem and then I can help you. Okay, what should I do first? Combine like terms. What can I put together on the left? Negative 4 and 104, which gives you what? 100. Good. Now what should I do? Subtract 100 from both sides, like I said, Lorenzo. I get 8x equals 80. And my final step? Divide by 8. Very nice. I get x equals 10 what? degrees because we're talking about an angle 10 degrees <clears throat> all right now you've got question two three four six nine and ten to complete you're going to finish those problems right now and then about let's see five to I'm about 15 minutes to finish those problems in 15 minutes we're going to check your answers on the front if you finish beforehand, you can get started on the back. But you have to finish the front because we're going to check those in just a few moments, okay? So questions one, two, three, and four all look the same. Question five and six look the same. Question seven, eight, nine, and ten look the same as well. Please make sure for nine and ten, you plug in your answer when you're done. So I'm going to leave this up. And you guys can go ahead and get yourself started. We'll check in about 15 minutes. So give it a go. Okay. 